Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Storyblocks. I'm going to be honest, in a lot of ways, this was not a video I expected to be making. So let me back up and start from the beginning. In 2009, Avatar was released in theaters, and apparently like everyone else on Earth with a pulse, I went to see it. I had some friends from my high school that had already gone and really hyped it up. They talked about how incredible the 3D was, how the alien planet was like nothing they'd ever seen in a movie before, but sitting there in the theater, I remember being skeptical. A lot of what my friends had said was true, the 3D was incredible. I think it's really easy to forget just how good that 3D was. Because there's a night and day difference between director James Cameron planning every shot around it and the lazy, uninspired post-conversions that would go on to clog up multiplexes for the next decade or so. But I came out of that movie thinking the story was too predictable, the heroes too stock and boring, and the villains pretty one-dimensional mustache twirlers. There were things that I really liked about it though, mostly on the technical front. There's just no denying that I had never seen something quite like that in a movie theater. So overall, I left with mixed feelings. At the time, it kind of felt like I was alone in that, like it really seemed like people loved this movie. But as the years went on, my initial opinion on it seemed to become the consensus. Until now, over 10 years later, it really feels like I see almost nothing but hate for Avatar. Even with that in mind, I was kind of surprised by just how dismissive I've seen people be of the new Avatar The Way of Water. So many seem to be assuming that Cameron's long gestating follow-up is doomed before it even opens. A lot of people, at least online where people are usually mad all the time, just seem angry at the prospect of it even coming out at all. And I gotta say, I'm a little confused by that. I still don't love Avatar. I would say it's on the low end of Cameron's filmography for me. I would put it somewhere below the abyss and about at the level of True Lies. You may think it's better or worse than that, and that's totally fine, but the almost hostile way that people are reacting to the release of the second one is still pretty baffling to me. I mean, this is James Cameron after all. The guy who brought us Terminator, Aliens, Titanic, and T2. You may not like all those movies, but I think most would admit that these are highlights of a really impressive career. Even if Avatar is not, and will never be, my favorite Cameron movie, if the guy spends over a decade working on something, I'm gonna wanna check it out, and I'm gonna try to go in with an open mind. In a world where movie studios rush out barely finished and forgettable films like Morbius all the time, I really hope there's still a place for what Cameron is attempting here. Maybe it'll turn out to be a disaster, I don't know, but one thing I do know is that I'm still really interested in seeing what the director of Aliens, a guy who has tried to push the medium of film into new and innovative places, has been working on for over a decade. And after years and years of pop culture defining films, I really think he's at least earned that much. This isn't me saying everyone needs to be crazy excited for Avatar 2. But at the same time, the instant knee-jerk negative reaction to it is still pretty weird. The common line that I see about this is that the movie has zero footprint in the popular imagination. I know this because people say it constantly. Seriously, I see people say Avatar is forgotten so often that I think it ends up undercutting their point. Avatar is so forgotten that we have to constantly talk about how forgotten it is at least once a month. Now I do think the movie's reputation has suffered in the past 10 years, and there's a pretty clear reason for that that goes beyond just having a fairly bog standard script. This is a movie that actively works against the home viewing experience. Avatar was not a film in any way designed to play well on DVD, Blu-ray, or streaming. Seeing it theatrically and in 3D was the one way it was intended to be seen. Period. I know they show it on TNT constantly, and I'm always confused by like who is excited to watch it that way. This was a movie on the cutting edge of technology at the time that was always meant to be engaged with in that very specific way. Unlike so many releases that had 3D tacked onto them, Avatar was built from the ground up for that experience. For people who hate going to the theater and only want to watch stuff at home, that's a problem, so I guess I totally get being dismissive. I love movie theaters, and they've always been my preferred way to watch films, so to see a director go all out on trying to make that trip to the theater as visually unique and innovative as possible isn't just some goofy gimmick to me, it's really exciting. 
Maybe it was short-sighted to build a film around that technology, but honestly, that technology is incredible. Avatar was a trailblazing movie in that respect, and I'm always interested to see what Cameron has cooked up when it comes to that kind of stuff, especially now that we have a better idea of what this sequel will be. It's no secret that the man loves the ocean. He's made a bunch of ocean-centric documentaries, he's one of the few people alive that's explored the depths of the Mariana Trench. It's obviously something that means an enormous amount to him. So spending 10 years on an Avatar sequel that's built entirely around water? Like of course I want to see the results of that. Maybe the movie really will be the disaster and massive box office failure that many critics are expecting but I'm glad we still have a film industry that can support a talented director spending so much time tackling what sounds like an ultra ambitious vision. Whether it'll be any good is an open question, but it's hard not to admire just how much passion and dedication has been poured into this thing. The most obvious and often repeated critique of Avatar 1 is that it's just dances with wolves in space. I was one of the many people posting that exact sentence online back in like 2012. And you know what, there's still an element of truth there. Avatar's story uses tried and true plotting and character archetypes, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there's some amazing hidden depths that most people are missing when it comes to, like, the villains of the film. This script is about as basic as they come, and I still feel like that's a big problem with the movie. But I don't really like the dances with wolves in space line anymore because of just how dismissive it is. For one thing, the movie isn't set in space, it's set on the planet of Pandora, a highly detailed, richly textured world that's the true star of the movie. The vistas and wildlife created for the film pushed the envelope on CGI back in 2009, and I'm pretty confident that The Way of Water can do the same thing for 2022. Again, I'm not saying this makes Avatar a perfect movie, it's not, but I am confused when people dismiss the technical accomplishments here. I have been accused of hating CGI in the past, and I get why, I have complained about modern special effects in a lot of my past videos. But it's definitely not CGI that I hate, it's the often lazy way that it's used. And say what you will about Avatar, not every CG element has aged gracefully, but a lazy usage of computer generated effects, it definitely isn't. CGI is used to build a bizarre and vibrant world here, and that's something that I'm always happy to see more of. It is that world of Pandora that I'm interested in seeing again, but sure, I am also worried that the script will be terrible. People seem to be assuming that that's just a lost cause for the rest of these Avatar movies, like there's no possible way they can move beyond the broad, screenwriting 101 nature of the first film. Now that might end up being the case, but I'm not going to rush to judgement before I see it, especially since Cameron has brought on a writer to help him out this time around, Josh Friedman, who I thought did amazing work on the underrated Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles. He was the showrunner of that show, and he brought a real depth to those characters, in a way that I wasn't expecting from a Terminator TV spinoff. You gotta remember, Cameron was the only credited writer on Avatar 1, and he made the choice to not go that route with the sequel which hopefully means he recognizes where the first film's faults were and brought in someone to make sure the script is in better shape this time around. We won't know until the movie actually comes out, but I do think the fact that he reached out and hired someone new means that he at least wants to try to step up his game in the writing department, and I really hope it pays off. So another thing I see people say a lot is that no one can even remember a character's name from the first movie. I personally never had that problem, like I remember Jake Sully just fine, even if I agree that they aren't exactly fleshed out three dimensional characters. But when people complain about that, I think they're maybe failing to ask themselves why they don't remember the characters in Avatar's names, but can name plenty of characters in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker just fine. The fact that Episode 9 passes that test with flying colors tells me that maybe the test wasn't all that worthwhile in the first place. It's not because J.J. Abrams' finale was a better movie, it's because Star Wars is a brand that we've all seen over and over again for decades. Avatar was one movie released over a decade ago. It seems like a really arbitrary test to me because it's a standard that most other blockbuster movies don't ever have to worry about meeting just by virtue of being franchise films and sequels. This isn't to make excuses for the film's bland characters, but just to say that when I see that point brought up as if it's the final and definitive proof that Avatar sucks end of discussion, I just don't really buy that. 
It's not a perfect movie. There's a lot of things that I really hope they improve going forward. But I also don't think the second film deserves to be dismissed out of hand. It's a blockbuster movie made by a guy who directed some of the best blockbusters of the past 50 years, and it's a story that's building off a universe that still has so much potential and so much fresh ground it could cover. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll come out and people will think it's a boring retread of the first film. That's very possible. But I really don't want to assume that sight unseen. Avatar The Way of Water may not be my most anticipated movie of the year or anything, but as someone who respects Cameron as a director and admires the world he created in that first film, I'm at least going to give it a fair shake. I think it deserves that much. So I get a lot of people asking me where to get started making videos, and I understand why. It's a pretty daunting task, especially if you're like me and you don't really love the idea of constantly filming yourself. One tool that I'm really glad exists now is Storyblocks. Storyblocks makes it not just possible, but much, much easier to create video content online because it gives you all the tools you need to execute your vision. A huge part of that is their royalty-free, demand-driven library. We're talking about an ever-expanding library of 4K and HD footage, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more that you're free to use for your own projects. They have a diverse library that you can use anywhere for personal and commercial use, which, speaking as a YouTuber, I can tell you is pretty hard to come by. And this isn't a super expensive one-size-fits-all thing either, because Storyblocks has flexible subscriptions that scale to give you the stuff you need for your specific project, with their unlimited all-access plan giving you unlimited access to over 1 million assets. And their enterprising licensing ensures that you will be able to use that footage wherever you decide to put your content. It's really a win-win all around for content creators, so if you've ever thought about hopping into the video world, it's hard to find a better place to start. Click on storyblocks.com slash midnight in the description and find the Storyblocks plan that's right for you. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.